Welcome to another video of CIE Backpack. Before we begin our today's topic, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get further notified. Our today's topic is entity. Just like its structure, this topic is also pretty complex, so do not skip any part of the video. The first thing to understand about today's topic is what is entity. Just like any other molecule of our body, entity is also a molecule present in our blood plasma. But there are some specific terms used for NAD molecule, which is that it's a coenzyme. A coenzyme means an organic molecule other than protein, which is temporarily attached to the enzyme. When the function is performed, it gets detached with this enzyme. You can see in this picture, the coenzyme has its particular region where it fits with the enzyme. Coming back to NAD, it has redox properties, meaning that it can reduce itself. Also, it can oxidize itself. Let me explain you how this is done. You can see the positive sign with NAD. Yes, this sign shows that it is already in its oxidized state. When the molecule is already in its oxidized state, so it means it needs to get reduced. And when it gets reduced, it gains that hydrogen ion and becomes NADH. NADH is another molecule which we will discuss later in this video. So the third point is that it's a reducing agent. But it is already in oxidized state. So what does it mean? A reducing agent is that molecule which reduces the other and get themselves oxidized. But over here, it is already in oxidized state, which means that this reducing agent is NADH, not NAD+. Let me clear one thing out. The mechanism of NAD plus and NADH is like a cycle. So NAD plus acts as an oxidizing agent while NADH acts as a reducing agent. So the fourth point is that, like ATP, it is also an energy carrier molecule because it carries hydrogen, electrons and protons that we will cover later in the video. Coming to the structure of NAD, it has two nucleotides containing ribose sugar. One contains nitrogenous base adenine and the other ribose sugar contains nicotinamide ring. Other than NAD, there is another molecule in plant cells known as NADP. This molecule acts as a hydrogen carrier in photosynthesis. All these points are easily visible in the structure. Dinucleotide means it has two nucleotides. Both those nucleotides contain a phosphate group and a ribose sugar. But the only difference is that one contains nicotinamide ring and the other contains adenine ring. This change makes this molecule suitable for its mechanism. To understand the mechanism of NAD, we need to study the structure and the function of NADH. We all know that NADH is a reduced form of NAD+, and it has a potential to yield 3 ATPs. It is formed when NAD+, gains 2 electrons and 2 protons. I hope you get the concept of NADH and ignore the mistake in the third point. So the only difference between both these molecules is that NADH has one more hydrogen than NAD+, and it has broken its double bond to gain that hydrogen. Now coming to the mechanism of NADH and NAD+. I have already explained you that NAD+, reduces to form NADH, and NADH oxidizes to form NAD+. The mechanism is such that the molecule has bonded with hydrogen ion and an electron. You can see in the equation that NAD+, has gained two electrons and an hydrogen ion to form NADH. As already stated that it has redox properties, meaning that it will oxidize and reduce at the same time. The above reaction involves the removal of two hydrogen atoms from the reactant, which is RH2, in the form of hydride ion and proton, which is H+. The proton is released into the solution while the reactant RH2 is oxidized and NAD plus is reduced to form NADH. This NADH is formed by the transfer of hydride H- ion to the nicotinamide ring. The conversion of NAD molecule from its oxidized form NAD+ to its reduced form NADH and back provides the cells with a mechanism for accepting and donating electrons. NAD+ and NADH plays an important role in reaction associated with glycolysis, phosphorylation, Krebs cycle and fermentation, which are all the processes of respiration. Either NADPH or NADH both has potential of 3 ATP. Remember that ATP is the energy currency, meaning that indirectly NADP or NADH molecule can yield energy, but this will happen during respiration. 
Now let's see what happens during the glycolysis which is the first step of respiration. Do not worry about glycolysis or any of the steps of respiration. The upcoming videos will be surely about the steps of respiration in detail. In order to clear your concepts about NADH and respiration, it is important to highlight few of the steps involved in glycolysis, oxidative phosphorylation or either Krebs cycle which directly or indirectly uses NADH or NAD+. So during glycolysis, which is the first step of respiration, the glucose molecule is converted into pyruvate. This conversion releases NADH and ATP. So you must be wondering how is it done. So there are a few steps of glycolysis. Mainly glycolysis is divided into three main steps. One is energy investment phase, the other is sugar cleavage phase and the third is energy yielding phase. So during sugar cleavage, the sixth step includes the production of NADH. Glyceraldehyde is oxidized by NAD and while NAD is reduced to form NADH. Glyceraldehyde is a transition molecule involved in the production of pyruvate during glycolysis. The overall reaction is exergonic, releasing energy. This energy is used to phosphorylate the molecule forming 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. Because bi means 2, so the energy released during the production of NADH is used to make biphosphate. This is a simultaneous reaction. You can see in the steps of glycolysis, the number 6 step shows the production of 2 NADH molecules because 2 pyruvate molecules are formed from 1 glucose molecule. Hence, every product being formed will be doubled. So throughout the glycolysis, only two molecules of NADH are being produced. Coming to the next step of respiration, which is known as pyruvate oxidation or link reaction. Overall pyruvate oxidation converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is a two-carbon molecule attached to the coenzyme A, producing an NADH molecule and releasing one of the carbon dioxide molecule in the process because pyruvate is a three-carbon molecule. Then this acetyl-CoA acts as a fuel for the citric acid cycle in the next stage of cellular respiration. You can see in the picture that the three NAD molecules are converted into three NADH molecules, but this doesn't happen collectively. Instead, what happens is that the acetyl-CoA is broken down and the coenzyme A travels back. The production of NADH happens thrice in the cycle, but as you know that the two molecules of acetyl-CoA are being used, that means two cycles are being operated simultaneously. So the total of 6 NADH will be produced. Once NADH is being produced, when isocitrate, which is a 6 carbon molecule, is broken down to alpha ketoglutrate, which is a 5 carbon molecule, releasing CO2. The other molecule of NADH is being released when alpha ketoglutarate is converted into secanyl CoA, which is a 4 carbon molecule releasing CO2. And the third pair of NADH is released in the last step where malate, 4 carbon compound, is converted into oxaloacetate, which is a 4 carbon compound. So, no carbon dioxide will be released in this step. Coming to the last step of cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. NADH plays a vital role in the whole process. In this process, the reduced electron carriers NADH and FADH from other steps of cellular respiration transfer their electrons to the molecule near the beginning of the transport chain. In this process, they turn back into NAD plus and FAD plus. Then these molecules travel back to the glycolytic pathway to be reused. The energy value of NADH is greater than all the complexes in the electron transport chain. And so, the NADH will be broken down into NAD+, H+, and an electron. This electron will jump from NADH to complex 1 and so on until it reaches complex 5. As discussed earlier, that one molecule of NADH has energy to yield 3 ATP. This happens because 10 protons are pumped by NADH. Then these 10 protons make 3 ATP. We will study in detail how this ATP is being produced in the complex 5 in our upcoming videos of oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation marks the end of cellular respiration. You can see the overview of cellular respiration in the form of a table which shows each and every step of cellular respiration which is associated with the production of NADH along with its steps. In glycolysis, during sugar cleavage, 
2 and ADH are being produced. While in Krebs cycle, in step 3, 4 and 8, 6 NADH molecules are being produced collectively. While in oxidative phosphorylation, 1 NADH produces 10 protons and these 10 protons pump 3 ATP. These are all the reactions in which NADH is associated with cellular respiration. We will discuss the use of NADH in photosynthesis, but that will be a whole new video regarding the photosynthesis. Till then, stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get further notified. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and if you find my video useful, then please give it a thumbs up and do comment below which topic you want to see next.